So apparently, Toyota is selling hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. So I've come here to Destination Toyota Burnaby to test drive one for myself. Now, I don't care about the leather seats or the heated this or that. I don't care about features. I want to learn about the fuel cell technology, how it compares to battery electric vehicles, and how you refill the darn thing. Are there stations around? I'm Mike, the channel's Downy Live. Let's get this car. There we go. Ooh, fancy. First thing I notice is it's a four seater. There's no center seat. That doesn't fold up, only seats four people. All right, let's take it for a spin and see how it does. Whoa, you saw that, right? That's pretty slick. That's pretty cool. I'm sure that's a feature that's common in most modern cars. I just don't drive a modern car. Okay, let's start this thing. Put on the brake, power on, put it into drive, and away you go. This is the Toyota Mirai, and according to Toyota, it's the world's first mass-produced fuel cell electric vehicle. Now I wanna find out how fuel cell electric vehicles work, but also how they work in the real world with our regular lives and what it's like to live with. First thing we have to do, they gave it to us with less than a quarter tank full, so we gotta go fill it up. Let's look this up. So according to Google Maps, there are only four hydrogen fuel stations in the Metro Vancouver area, but the nearest one to us is only a 16 minute drive. Let's go check it out. Starting route to HTC. So what you need to know about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is that they are electric vehicles. In fact, it runs off of a battery, just like a Tesla or another electric vehicle does. The only thing is, this has a hydrogen fuel cell and a hydrogen tank in the car as well. And what the hydrogen fuel cell does is it converts the hydrogen into electricity, into the battery, to the electric motor. Now, a lot of people say that is significantly less efficient than a standard battery electric vehicle. Now, if we assume you got your electricity from sustainable electricity methods like solar power or wind power, that electricity goes straight into the power grid, plug it in, straight to your battery. Very efficient system. And we already have the power grid infrastructure in place. So it makes a lot of sense. But where traditional battery electric vehicles don't do well is with range and charging time. And that's where fuel cells help. And the benefit of hydrogen is it's lighter and more compact and easier to store than batteries. Batteries are big, they're heavy, whereas hydrogen is a gas and it can be compressed into a really small space, which means for less space than it takes a battery, you can drive much further on hydrogen. Is that it? No. No, that's air. Where is the hydrogen pump? No, not there. That's it. Hydrogen. Oh, we're behind another one. Gonna beat us to the pump. What's your name? I'm Mike. Oh, me too. Hey. There you go. I knew I liked him already. This is perfect. I was gonna fill up. Mike here was in front of me, also in a Toyota Mirai. So $1.28. So hydrogen is less expensive than gasoline at the moment. How long have you had yours for? Uh, about almost a year. Oh, wow. What, what do you like about it and what do you not like about it? I love everything about it. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of stations. With this car, it gets about 500 kilometers. I think it's about 400 kilometers to Kelowna. Yeah. If I wanted to go down to the States, it would restrict me right now. Washington and Oregon don't have stations. But California has a fine. Yeah, California's got a ton. So how come you chose a hydrogen electric vehicle instead of a battery electric vehicle? Just the, the range and the fill up time. Right. I mean, I don't have to sit and wait for two, three hours for a full fill. Any downsides you've experienced yet? No, no, no. Easy, we'll take oh, it, uh, we'll take his yeah, word. I, I just met him. This yeah. man is not paid. So, yeah. Mike here put some better wheels on his. It looks good in the white too. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Look at that, making friends already. All right, our turn to try this. Here it goes, hydrogen. Because it's not gasoline, it's not just a hole. You're not just pouring liquid into it. It's a compressed gas, up to 10,000 pounds of pressure. So this is actually airplane grade metal here to ensure it doesn't pop off because that could be messy. Dollar 28. <laughs> Look at the ice buildup on this thing. So unlike a gasoline car, you don't need to hold it. It locks in because it's pressurized. So 
it'll do it all automatically. In fact, it has sensors going into the tank to find out how much is in the tank and it will automatically stop. Well, that didn't take any longer than a normal gasoline car fill. Filling up from one quarter to full cost $46, but the receipt from my car the other day of the same amount came out at $53. So it's a little bit less to use hydrogen. Now, one of the big questions you'll get all the time is, where does the hydrogen come from? Well, actually, hydrogen is the most abundant element on the planet. In fact, in the universe. Look at this. This is water, obviously. H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. So you get hydrogen through electrolysis, which is essentially separating the elements of hydrogen and oxygen. Then you take the hydrogen, put it into a compressed tank, truck it to a gas station, put it into the ground. Then you drive up in your car, pump it into your car, the fuel cell converts that hydrogen into electricity, which then powers your electric motor. Now, once it's done with that electricity, it puts out the hydrogen out the back end, but guess what? It combines with oxygen again on the way out and turns back into water, fresh water. So a vehicle like this will have water pouring out of it down to the drains, giving our fish fresh water. Now here's the reality of it and where the inefficiencies lie. You need electricity to make electrolysis happen, to convert the water into hydrogen, which then makes the electricity for the car. So the system isn't perfect yet, but it will get better. Just like batteries will get better for battery electric vehicles, hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cells on the whole system will become more efficient. At the moment, it has all the benefits of an electric vehicle with all the advantages of a gas powered vehicle in filling up quickly and having longer range. Now I'm not gonna talk about the drivability of the Mirai specifically because it's a Toyota. It runs great, it's really easy to drive, it's comfortable, it's, it's a luxurious Toyota. So we're gonna skip over that and just stick to the tech that makes us the hydrogen fuel cell car. People always wanna know about the power. How fast does it go? Well, think of this as more of an eco car rather than a high performance car. It has about 150 horsepower under this little hood here. Not the fastest, but it'll do the job. So while it's driving, it kind of has three modes that it uses and you won't notice the difference between them, but the first is off of battery power only. So if you're creeping along or driving slowly, it'll use battery electricity to power the electric motor. But if you put your foot down, the hydrogen fuel cell will then kick in a lot of electricity to the electric motor as well to give you more power. And then of course, if you take your foot off the accelerator, it uses regenerative braking to create electricity from the wheels slowing down and puts it back into the battery pack. Very similar to the technology used in hybrid electric vehicles, which is kind of what Toyota has been known for for the last few years. My one disappointment with the car is that it looks like every other car. It runs on hydrogen. It should look like a spaceship. It doesn't look bad, but it should look really cool. So it's time to return it to my friends at Destination Toyota Burnaby, but I wanna know what you think in the comments. Do you think it's cool tech or it's a waste of time? Batteries are good enough. I'll tell you this, I think the technology is really fascinating and I'm really curious to see what happens with this in the future and what other areas it goes into beyond cars. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, I'm Mike. The channel is Downey Live. Adventure, tech, travel, all sorts of things coming for 2021. You can subscribe by clicking on my face right here. And if you wanna watch when I test drove a three-wheeled electric vehicle that's made in Canada, you can watch that right there. To be honest, I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya.